This is Chippy with GaryPad.com and the HTC Flyer. One of the key features of the HTC Flyer is the uh, pen, which I'm holding up here. Unfortunately, the screen's on, so you can't see it very well. There it is. Um, and the, let's say, inking experience. So I want to demo the experience on this video. Uh, but to start off with, I want to mention um, that there are some issues. Uh, for those that are used to handwriting on Windows 7, and that's um, as you type, as you write recognition, um, you won't find that on the HTC Sense, and there'll be some, some differences you'll see. But for someone coming into, uh, let's call it note-taking and annotation for the first time, there's uh, some interesting applications. What uh, HTC have done is they've put a digitizer layer over the capacitive touchscreen, which uh, allows you to uh, use the pen but the applications within Android don't support the pen uh, uh, natively. There are some applications that HTC have built though and for those applications that don't support the pen you can actually do a very quick screenshot uh, sorry you touch the screen you bring up a snapshot take a snapshot and then you can annotate um, on the screen but remember that's just a JPEG, that's not the application. You then have to discard that, come out and move on. So there are three apps I want to show you um, that are important. If I can, there we go. First of all is the note taking app. Now this is a, a key one. This integrates with uh, uh, Evernote in the back end. So all the notes are synchronized in the cloud. And um, uh, Evernote also do some text recognition on certain things as well um, usually printed media not handwritten media so you've got this situation now where we've got um, choice of pens we've got choice of colors choice of thicknesses etc and then I can start uh, making notes on here uh, there is uh, some palm uh, rejection on here so you can actually touch the screen but you have to be very careful because if you touch the wrong part of the screen what's going to happen is what happened there and that's basically that the keyboard is going to pop up um, so you have to be pretty quick palm pen to get things going I'll put the pen first and then start to uh, ink so let's um, get rid of that uh, now there's some lag I've found and uh, although I'm not the best handwriter I do find that my handwriting is better on Windows 7. So I think uh, as far as Evernote's uh, optical character rec recognition goes, it's not going to be ideal for that. There's some delay in some lag in the on-screen keyboard responsiveness. In general it's uh, pretty pretty good though. So that uh, this is the note-taking app. You can add pictures, you can add attachments, you can add audio content and you can um, link it with a calendar item which is which is quite nice and the fact that that goes into Evernote then means that it's available on all your other Evernote enabled devices which is kind of nice. There are two apps though that I think are more important than the Notes app and um, especially for um, business and students. The first one is the PDF viewer. Now this is a normal uh, PDF viewer. Whoops, let's get the right PDF file. But it allows um, text to be selected, highlighted and annotated and then the resulting file is resaved as a PDF either with a, a text layer, sorry, a, a sketch layer or combined onto one layer. So for example this is a Google document with text in it I can actually select the text button now and select tech, highlight text like that. I can let go of the highlight button and then write on top so what I could do in theory is, is sign, whoops, sign the actual document at the bottom, and then uh, move on. Uh, this is this image. Sorry, this uh, is a scan of a book. Um, what you can't do though is share that in any way. So I can't now take a screenshot of that um, and then send it because it's a sketch-enabled app and the screenshot function doesn't work. So. There's no way to take a screenshot of that now and send it to someone. What you then have to do is go to the menu, save, and then you get the option to, to flatten the file or save it with the scribble as a second layer on the text. Now, I think that's very important. You think about uh, reading some PDFs uh, and annotating those or, or um, 
presentations or making notes on presentations. I think that's pretty powerful. But there's another app which I think is uh, possibly even more powerful, and that's the the Reader app. Now this is backed by uh, Kobo, and uh, I had already had some documents. Sorry, some some books uh, in Kobo, so I synchronized with my account and I downloaded one of the books. So there's the mobile layout for a page. Um, let's go to a fresh page. Um, as you can see, a lot of margin, a lot of white space. It's actually pretty inefficient, and this text size is the smallest you can get. You go to the largest, and um, it's, um, well, looks like um, starter school, if you ask me. So it would be nice to see some of those margins squashed down. There's room for a whole lot of more text on here. But that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is uh, annotations. Of course, you've got the uh, nice little page turn feature here. I think you can do the, yeah, always good for a demo. Useless in real world, but anyway. So once again, you can select text here. So select this, All right? Now what I'm going to do, and I can't do this with the pen, but I can touch it with my finger. And then I can create a note on top of that. I can either type on that note or put text on that note. Uh, I can't, it's not a rich note taking experience. I can't attach images, I can't attach uh, hyperlinks as well. But uh, I think that's pretty powerful. So what happens now is you see there's a note attached to that highlighted text. I don't have to highlight, I can also use the uh, pen features to uh, let's have a look let's go to the tools choose a pen let's choose a highlighter and uh, highlight something there and then maybe pull something out there and say uh, you know question mark um, this we could scrub through uh, and then we can move on notice that I have to use the finger to change the page um, but here's some notes I've done before on previous pages if I can find there we go now again on this, you cannot take a snapshot now of that page and send it to someone. Uh, you can't even share the book. You can share a link to the book in the store, but you can't share the annotations. So these are personal annotations. And look, uh, you can actually flick between um, the current and the next note that's there. It's like a little bookmark feature. Bookmarks happen on the top as well though. So uh, selecting, you can then unhighlight that, you can change the color, and of course using the standard uh, pen, and let's bring you up a, a thicker uh, pen here so that you can see this. There we go. I can actually use the erase button on that as well, which is pretty handy. So um, 10 out of 10 to HTC for that application because I think that's actually more powerful than the than the notes application. Let's just quickly show you then the snapshot feature again. For example, if I go to the gallery, which is here, I get a nice picture of Sasha Pallenberg uh, from our testing last night. And let's see what we happens when we try and uh, write on top of that. We're in this snapshot mode now. Uh, oh, hold on, I have actually annotated direct over that image. Okay, this is more than I thought would happen. Okay, it saved the image and it showed it there. It's with uh, annotations layer. I wonder if I can switch the annotations layer off. No, I can't. Uh, I can't bring up the pen tools. Can I bring up the tools to hide them? Yeah. So you can actually save annotations over images as well. I was under the impression that you actually had to uh, create a snapshot. I wonder if you can actually create a snapshot by... No, you can't create a snapshot, but you can, of course, share the image. I'm not sure if that shares it with the annotations. So let's show you everything with a non-pen enabled app. As soon as I press the screen, it says you can't scribble here. You can bring up the um, uh, you can attach it to a, a note or if I just touch on the screen now that is a screenshot which allows me to uh, annotate but it's just a JPEG and I can share it via the normal with my finger via the normal uh, sharing sub subsystem in Android which is uh, pretty handy indeed. There's that disconnect between the pen and the capacitive touch. Um, you also have to think about the pen not being stirrable 
you have also have to think that there's a battery in here. We don't know how long this battery will last. Oh, one thing I should uh, quickly mention is that it's pressure sensitive and I believe it's a two stage. So you've got light and heavy, light, heavy. And I don't think I can, yeah, it's just a two stage pressure sensitivity on that. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, all the pen features that I've found so far. Obviously, uh, I found that uh, gallery feature there that I didn't know about before. Uh, there may be other hidden apps as well. HTC have, for example, uh, the Kid Mode app, which I believe uh, is pen enabled. Uh, there may be some other apps as well, but I'll, uh, I'll be checking those out. So, in a live session tonight, um, Wednesday, where are we now? The 17th, are we? Wednesday the 17th? Wednesday the 18th. 8 o'clock tonight. Sorry. 8 o'clock GMT plus 1. 9 o'clock PM Berlin time. Central European summer time. We'll be doing a live session with the uh, HTC Flyer. So this is Chippy with the HTC Flyer. Carrypad.com for more information. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.